The miracles of Jesus were actually an introduction to the day of salvation. It sort of opened up what he was all about. He came to do what, what had to be done and no one else could do it. That's what it boils down to. Mm -hmm. Now Jesus talked about his works and his miracles were some of his works. He said they were a testimony or a witness yes. to him. Here's how he put it in John 5, 36. I have a greater witness than that of John. That's John the Baptist. He was a pretty powerful witness. Mm -hmm. I have a greater witness than that of John. Mm -hmm. For the works which the Father has given me to finish, the same works that I do, bear witness of me that the Father has sent me. This man is from God. That's what these works were telling. Amen. John 10, 26 said the same thing. I, I told you and you believe not the works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. So you want to be a student of these uh, miracles of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Become familiar with them and know them. Because they, uh, they are bearing a witness mm -hmm. to Christ, who He is, what He, what he does. <laughs> and if you've never had any uh, difficulty you couldn't handle, you will one of these days. Yeah. <laughs> You'll have uh, some. Mm -hmm. And then you think of what Jesus did. So yeah. you recall back these marvelous things that he that he did. Now my text uh, tonight we're going to deal with Jesus healing a uh, man that was possessed with a demon that made him blind and deaf. Quite a thought. Text is found in Matthew 12 verses 22 and through 24. Then they brought unto him one possessed with a devil, blind and dumb. And he healed him, mm -hmm. insomuch that the blind and dumb both spake and saw. And all the people were amazed and said, Is not this the son of David? Mm -hmm. And when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow does not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub, the prince of mm -hmm. devils. Luke's uh, account of this is found in the 11th chapter of Luke. The, the difference here is he doesn't mention the blindness, but we know from what follows that it's the same, it's the same account. Luke eleven fourteen. He was casting out a devil and it was dumb. Mm -hmm. And it can't you know, I actually didn't want to notice that that the devil was the demon was dumb. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. See, this little little thing you pick up on here that it, so it communicated its dumbness it imposed on this on this man. Uh -huh. That's how it made a man. He imposed his own mm -hmm own personality on the person. Uh -huh. yeah. <clears throat> he was casting out a devil and it was dumb and it, it came to pass when the devil was gone out the dumb spake and the people wondered. <laughs> but some of them said he casteth out devils through Beelzebub the prince of devils. And then Luke adds and others tempting him sought of him a sign from heaven. <laughs> he, he heals a man that's, that's blind and and dumb, and they ask him for a sign. Oh, yeah. See, that shows you the obtuseness of the flesh. So God can work right, right, right before the flesh. It doesn't know what's going on. Yeah, yeah, that's that's right. It's almost that's like it's right. blind, yeah. blind to it. So that's that's another uh, jeopardy of walking in the flesh. You're living in sin, or living far off from God. You become like blind to that's what's right. happening. So yes. if God were to work a great thing right under your nose, you wouldn't have any idea. That anything that's right. real of significance happened. That's right. Now let's look at the background of this. <laughs> of this miracle because the miracles were always within a, a context of some kind. Within, there were some surrounding events and this tells us a little bit about the kind of environment God works in. Jesus had, uh, had just healed great multitudes of people and told them not to say anything about it. This is about Matthew 12, 15 and 16. When Jesus knew it, he withdrew himself from thence and great multitudes followed him and he healed them all. Mm -hmm. And he charged them that they should not make him known. You know, when you read those things, you you always wonder. I wonder if they if they obeyed him there. You know, it'd be <laughs> be pretty hard there. Jesus does something not to make it known. But yes. it was the he said this because it was premature uh -huh. for him to become very popular. Because his popularity is what in fact incensed the Pharisees against him so that they opposed him, and that was scheduled for a certain time to happen at a certain time. 
And so Jesus not only came to die, he didn't he didn't intend to die prematurely. Right, amen. He had to die at, at the uh, when the in the fullness of time. So that's why he told him not to make it known. And uh, but I imagine they did have a great deal of difficulty, <laughs> great deal of difficulty not doing that. Mm -hmm. Now this is a whole series of events Matthew tells us was a fulfillment of Isaiah's prophecy. Isaiah had talked about this, and the people had waited for, well, that's about 700 years prior, about seven centuries prior to this. God had made known he was going to do something through Isaiah, and now seven centuries later he's doing it, and, and uh, Matthew tells us that this fulfill this word. You can imagine uh, someone, someone saying something, say around 1305, mm -hmm. And then today it took place. Do you realize how alert people would have to be to like know this was actually being fulfilled? How many, how few people will be conscious of something said that long ago? See, mm -hmm. but the, but the Jews, this is one thing they brought to the world. They brought the scriptures, and they had an yeah. acute awareness of the scriptures, as we're going to find. So they weren't ideal people to say the least, but they did know. What the scripture said, and it's always an advantage to know what the scripture says. You have yeah. some kind of advantage. At least you kind of know what's what's happening. Here's what Matthew said about it. Matthew 12:17. That it might be fulfilled, which is spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, "Behold, my servant, whom I have chosen, my beloved, in whom my soul is well pleased. I will put my spirit upon him, and he shall show judgment to the Gentiles." He shall not strive nor cry, neither shall any man hear his voice in the streets. A bruised reed shall he not break, and smoking flax shall he not quench, till he send forth judgment unto victory. In his, in his name shall the Gentiles trust. Mm -hmm. said so that was fulfilled. Mm -hmm. In other words, this miracle was like a judgment. Like a judgment against Satan. Satan's kingdom had imposed something on this man, and he brought forth judgment and, and reversed that. He also, it indicates to you that this debility had no doubt affected this man, and these Ill, various illnesses that he healed had affected the people, cast them down. They were like bruised reeds and smoking flax. Mm -hmm. Some of them no doubt had a great longing and yearning for Christ, but they had tremendous setbacks in their own natures and I have no question but they might have doubted you know I wonder if I'm suitable or if, if God's going to have mercy on me I wonder if I go to Jesus if he will in fact do anything mm -hmm. well he won't quench a smoke flex or, right. or, or break a bruised reed if there's anything salvageable Christ will salvage it we make sure about that if, we, if down in the bottom of your soul there's just a little tiny spark. We're not going to get upset with you. We know that Jesus wants that fan that into a flame, and He's doing mm -hmm. this. See, this, all these miracles, this ignited hope yes. in the people. It had been a long, dry season. <laughs> For the Jews, it had been a long, dry season. It went back before the days of Malachi, some four or five hundred years prior, and there just hadn't been very much happening at all among them. They'd just known oppression and been bludgeoned by everybody from Alexander the Great to Rome, see? Mm -hmm. So that what he's doing, he's igniting this uh, great hope. Isaiah also spoke about this in Isaiah 42.1. This is the prophecy that Matthew quoted. Behold my servant whom I behold, mine elect, in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. He shall not cry, nor lift up, nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. The bruised reed shall he not break, and the smoking flax shall he not quench. He shall bring forth judgment unto truth. He shall not fail, nor be discouraged, till he have set judgment in the earth and the isles shall wait for his law. Mm -hmm. So what's he going to... We want to hear what he has to say. That's how we'd say it. We want to hear what he has to say. So what is, the, what is Isaiah saying? He's saying the person I'm going to say, when you see this person working these great things, work testifying of him, mm -hmm. this is the person. Yeah. 
that's pleasing me. This is mm -hmm. this is the person that I'm investing with the judgment. So mm -hmm. so you go to him. He's the one. This is just not a a, spe a man working spectacles. Mm -hmm. This is someone that's telling you God sent this sent this glorious Savior. He's going to show judgment. You know, he's not going to be noted for quarreling and raising <laughs> uh, raising insurrection against mm -hmm. people. He's not going to be known as a troublemaker, although he will make trouble. But that's not what he's going to be known for. His voice won't be heard in the street. He's not going to be a protester of some kind. And uh, he's going to be very careful to strengthen what remains for God. Thus, this is an environment now to be uncultured for the working of God. Jesus is uh, strengthening people. He's working healings. He's causing hope to abound. Faith is being kindled. People are starting to think about God. They're starting to think about deliverance and hope. See? They're thinking differently than they thought before. For they were beaten down, you know. Mm -hmm. Barabbas, remember, he was uh, led on insurrection against Rome. And that's the kind of thoughts that the, a lot of these people had, except for those that way back in their heart, they knew God's going to send somebody. And all of a sudden, he's there, mm -hmm. right before them. Yeah. This is the environment. See, a con a, an acute consciousness that the one God has sent among us. Yeah. Amen. That is the kind of environment God works in. Yeah. It's not the kind of environment where people have finally found the right church or the right doctrine. Or That's not it. It's where people become acutely aware of the man Christ Jesus. And when they do, this like awakens Amen. heaven. Amen. Now it says that they brought to him, they brought to, the people brought to him a man with a spirit. They brought him to him. Man with the spirit, evil spirit that made him uh, blind and dumb. Two premier senses. Now, there's quite a few texts in Scripture about people bringing others to Jesus. But it's just it's good to kind of get this into your mind. It, mm -hmm. it shows you that Jesus inducted a non-selfish era. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's right. Now, people, didn't, uh, they, people weren't prone to bring people to Moses. Mm -hmm. Moses so-and-so needs help. And it's kind of, law kind of makes you selfish. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not intended to do that, understand, but that's uh -huh. kind of what happens. And this didn't happen. They weren't bringing people to the prophets and bringing people to Aaron. But when Jesus came, they started bringing other people. Uh -huh. to him. Let me just read you some of these. Matthew 4, 24. His fame went throughout all Syria and they brought unto him all sick people and so forth. They brought them to him. Matthew 8, 16. When even was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. And Matthew 9, 2. And behold, they brought to him a man sick of palsy. Matthew 9, 32. And as they went out, behold, they brought to him a dumb man possessed with the devil. Mark 1, 32. And at even when the sun set, they brought to him all that were diseased. I'm showing you here that when people recognize who Jesus is, they try and get others to him. Yes. 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 They do. There's all kind of programs. I know there's all kind of programs designed to how you can win souls and so forth like this. But if you can never see Jesus as he is, you'll be Amen. You'll be bringing somebody mm -hmm. Amen. to him. Mark 20, they, the 9, 20, they brought unto him. And when they brought him unto him, this man brought his son unto Jesus. And when he saw him straightway, the spirit tear him, and he fell on the ground and wallowed foaming. But they brought him, brought him to Jesus. Now this, uh, why do people bring others to Jesus? This postulates or presumes a couple of things. First, it assumes that there's a, Jesus has a, an ability; he's uh -huh. able. And uh, and secondly, there's a persuasion that he's inclined to do this. Amen. See, I don't see how you could bring anybody to Jesus if you didn't. Know these two things in your heart. That, Amen. That Christ is able to do something about it, plus yes. God, He wants to do something about it. Mm -hmm. In fact, the scriptures sort of spill this out when they say in um, Hebrews 11 6, He that cometh to God must believe that He is. Mm -hmm. See, that's this ability part. And He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. So that's this inclination to do it. Faith, uh, faith has those, Amen. Has those two things. So I like to call this the AP factor. Awareness and, pers and persuasion. You're aware of uh, what Jesus can do and you're persuaded he wants to do it. See, it's one thing to know Jesus can, but you know that he will, that's, that's the point too. 
That's another matter. And I urge you to, uh, if you ever have trouble with this, you know that theologically you know that Jesus can, and you at least you confess. There's no question about what God can do. And mm -hmm. you, but see now you want to work. Once you got to move down to the next plateau, that He's willing to do it. Mm -hmm. See that's 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 the next plateau, and they had reached this. Now notice the condition of this man. Blind and dumb. A couple of afflictions. Mm -hmm. Now there were some people brought to Jesus that were only blind. Mm -hmm. Two blind men followed him once when he was coming into the city. They were just blind, that's all. They could speak though. Bartimaeus was blind, but he could speak. Thou son of David, have mercy on us. He was mm -hmm. blind, but he could speak. And when he came to Jericho, that's where Bartimaeus was, blind but could speak. And then there were some people that were dumb, but they, they weren't blind. Scripture says they brought him a man, and behold, they brought to him a dumb man. Mm -hmm. So he couldn't speak, but he could see, mm -hmm. hear. Other people couldn't, uh, couldn't see, but they could, they could hear. And some people couldn't, could see and hear, but they couldn't speak. And there was a variety of infirmities. Mm -hmm. The people had, but this uh, this man had two of them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There are some people that are in a worse condition. Yes, mm -hmm. amen. Yes, there right. are. Ever all of us have sinned, but it's not all like a like a linear line. Mm -hmm. It's all is exactly the same. It's not like that. Some people are in a worse case. Uh huh. But this isn't a, it's isn't a trouble with Jesus at all. Another man in Mark eight seven thirty two, he was deaf and had an impediment of the speech. He uh, he could speak, but he not not good. <laughs> An impediment, something like stuttering or something of this sort. He couldn't speak right. So I'm showing you here that there are some cases that are more severe than others. And this blindness and dumbness, this is not owing to natural effects. So I don't question some people are blind or dumb because of something natural that's happened. Mm -hmm. People they tell us are blind because of some kind of vitamin deficiency and. There's diseases that happen, but this is, that's not the category of disease we're talking about here. That, uh, that was induced by nature. Mark 9, 25, Jesus referred to a deaf and dumb spirit. Mm -hmm. Now this is a thing that's uh, relatively a new thought to me, but I can see how the spirit itself, this evil spirit itself, was deaf and dumb. Mm -hmm. And it imposed its personality on the person. Now, see, in this case, you have Satan's counterpart to, to God giving his Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. God gives his Holy Spirit, and then his, the Spirit's qualities Amen. are found in you. See, right. here, the qualities of this evil spirit are found mm -hmm. in, this, in this man. And mm -hmm. there wasn't anything he could do about it. Uh -huh. Mark 9, 17, Jesus spoke to a dumb spirit. He commanded a dumb spirit to come out of the person. Dumb means can't speak, not dumb as an ignorant. <clears throat> now what kind of response uh, happens? Well, there was, a, there was a total resolution. Mm -hmm. It was a total resolution to the situation. The blind spake and saw. The blind dumb man spake and saw. So it was a total instant. Resolution. Amen. He didn't have to be trained to speak and and trained to see. He didn't need a glasses to see. Mm -hmm. it was an instant resolution. It's what John would call John seven twenty three. Every wit whole mm -hmm. was that type of thing. You've got to believe Jesus is able to do this. Amen. You really do. Every wit whole. You have to. See, these people believe this. That's why they brought people to Jesus. That's why they brought people to Jesus. Now, if you wonder, if you wonder what kind of times we're living in, uh -huh. see, you think how very few people believe something like this. Mm -hmm. That there's no inability with Jesus. Right. This is not the people's common perception. In fact, there are people who will tell you Jesus doesn't do this anymore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's actually part of their theology. This mm -hmm. is what they teach. This is their perception of God. But for, for Jesus to work, says, so there has to come a time when you're fully persuaded that what he's promised, he's able to do. Amen. That's got to come. Amen. And if that doesn't come, you've got to be forgetting about your debility and start thinking about his ability. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
total resolution. So that's what happened to blind. That's what happened to blind and dumb man. He spoke and he saw. Now I want to draw attention to something the people said. The people said, "Is not this the son of David?" Yeah. Now I want to. I want to camp on this for a moment because there's quite a truth to be seen here about insight into the scripture and into promises. Now this phrase, the son of David, as used in this text, is not found anywhere in the Old Testament scriptures. The only place you will read the phrase son of David refers to Solomon. Every place, it never, nowhere, there's nowhere I'm going to make a point here mm -hmm. that there's some understanding. These yeah. people understood something because the scripture did not say the Messiah is going to be called the son of David. It mm -hmm. hinted at it, yeah. but you had, to have, you had to conclude this. This was the conclusion you had to reach. Now I want, so I want to read the text where he dealt with it. <laughs> All the texts that speak about Jesus tracing back to David is based on this passage that I'm going to read to you. It's found in 2 Samuel, the 7th chapter. And so far as if you were a strict uh, academian, you'd, you'd say, well, this, he's talking about Solomon here. In the immediate context, he was talking about Solomon, but he says a few things that gives you a hint. <laughs> this is something bigger than, than Solomon. So here's the text. Where thou art the son of David, this is not that it's the son of David, this is the text that uh, provoked that sort of observation. 2 Samuel 7, 12. When thy, God's talking to David, when thy days be fulfilled and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels, that is, he'll be your son, and I will establish his kingdom. He will build a house for my name. I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. Mm -hmm. I will be his father. He shall be my son. If he commit iniquity, I'll chasten him with the rod of men and with the stripes of the children of men. But my mercy shall not depart from him, as I took it from Saul, whom I put away before thee. And thine house and thy kingdom shall be established forever before thee. Thy throne shall be established forever. Mm -hmm. Well, he mingles in the Messiah and Solomon. He just... Mm -hmm. And you have to have discernment to tell Solomon's throne mm -hmm. wasn't going to be forever. Right. But the, but there was a, he was going to have a son and it would be forever. See? Mm -hmm. Yes. It's quite, quite remarkable that all, <laughs> in all of these texts that he doesn't say that the Messiah should be called the son of David. He doesn't, doesn't say that. You have, to, you have to read kind of between the lines and pick up on this. <laughs> Thy kingdom, your thrones forever. You've got to pick up on that sort of thing. Now the Psalms, who were written some time after this, they come along and they, they pick up on this. Psalm 89, 35. Once I have sworn by my holiness, I will not lie unto David. His seed shall endure forever, and his throne as a son before me. Mm -hmm. Well, he really wasn't talking about Solomon fully, but it, if you were a Jew, this maybe is what you thought. Mm -hmm. Psalm 132, 11. The Lord has sworn in truth unto David, he will not turn from it of the fruit of, of, the fruit of thy body, will I set up on my, thy throne. And David's still living at this time, so this sounds like, sounds like this is Solomon. Now David dies. Solomon takes his place. Mm -hmm. Solomon dies. Isaiah surfaces on the scene. And he takes up this theme. Solomon's dead and gone. Mm -hmm. Here's what he says, Isaiah 9, 6, and 7. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, the government shall be upon his shoulder. His name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor of the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end upon the throne of David, and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment, and so forth. But this is not Solomon that we're talking about now. I'm showing you, you can't read the Bible like you read a book in the library. Yeah. Yes. It's not like that. There are little hints in a lot of these prophecies that some people call them a dual fulfillment and there's a sense in which that's true that it was fulfilled two different ways. Mm -hmm. But the primary way was Christ. And what yeah. I'm showing you is the people in Jesus' day knew this. I don't think 20th century Christians could pick up on this. Mm -hmm. 
I honestly don't believe they could make this association. There's too much basic ignorance of the Word of God. Mm -hmm. But he was among a scripturally literate people, yeah. even though they were a very wayward people. Otherwise, they'd have never been able to say what they said. This is the Son of David. Isaiah says a little later, Isaiah the 11th chapter, <clears throat> There shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, that's David's father, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. That's, uh, Jesse's going to have an offspring, going to have a grandson. Except this is going to be a great, 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 you know, it's going to be a mm -hmm. long line. Jer what about Jeremiah? Some, some time passes and Jeremiah surfaces. Jeremiah 23, 5. The days come, saith the Lord, that I will raise unto David mm -hmm. a righteous branch. This is this son of David mm -hmm. we're talking about. Here. This is speaking of Christ from his kingly perspective. The seed of woman, the promise given to in Genesis 3.15, was Christ from a human perspective. He is going to be a going to be a man. Moses talked about him from a prophetic perspective. He said he will be a prophet. Mm -hmm. But in David is his, his royal. Yeah. Royal lineage. This is viewing Christ as a ruler and a king, son of David. Mm -hmm. In other words, David, God was going to make a kingdom that would grow out of the kind of kingdom that David had, one yeah. in which God was prominent, God did the choosing, God mm -hmm. did the keeping, yeah. God did the giving, God brought the victory, see so that kind of mm -hmm. that kind of kingdom. Jeremiah says again, Jeremiah thirty three, fifteen, in those days and at that time will I cause the branch of righteousness to grow up unto David. Mm -hmm. He shall execute judgment and righteousness in the land, in those days shall Judah be saved. Yeah. And Jerusalem shall dwell safely. This is the name of which he shall be called the Lord of righteousness, the Lord our righteousness. For thus saith the Lord, David shall never want a man to sit upon the throne of the house of Israel. See, that's exactly what he promised him in 2 Samuel. But it sounded like Solomon. But it was really Jesus he was Amen. talking about. Uh -huh. Why did he say it that way? Because, see, this foiled the old serpent. Amen. You cannot be able to see this. The serpent was given information, but not all of it. Amen. And it was couched here also so only people who wanted to know it could know it. Amen. Only people who wanted to pursue this and say, eh, this wasn't fulfilled totally in Solomon. There's got to be another that's going to be coming. Mm -hmm. and then when Jesus arrived, they said, this, this is the other one. Because there had never been anybody else Amen. that fit this. Jeremiah 33, 26. Then I will cast away the seed of, I will, then will I cast away the seed of Jacob and David my servant... So that I will not take any of his seed to be rulers over the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and I will cause their captivity to return and have mercy upon them. That is to say, it's going to look like Israel is going to be defunct. Uh -huh. But I'm going to reclaim them because uh -huh. I remember David. Yeah. Amen. Here's another. Amos 9.11. I will raise up the tabernacle of David that has fallen. That is to say, the lineage... It looked like the lineage of David had collapsed. Yeah. Israel and Judah split. Mm -hmm. Israel said, we don't want anybody from David's lineage reigning over us. But, see, but the most, Jesus was the final lineage Amen. of David. So here you see associated with Jesus after the order of David, you, he spoke about a kingdom being established. He spoke about building a house for God's name. For Solomon, that was a temple. For Christ, it's just the body of believers. Yes. He spoke about a kingdom being established. Israel's kingdom is not established. It went belly up after the Babylonian captivity. They've never had a kingdom of any kind. Mm -hmm. Never had a king ever again. Right. Once Jesus took the reins, nobody else got them. Amen. 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 Well, you got to see this. Mm -hmm. And the people do this. See, my point is the people... They saw this. Uh -huh. I want to show some cases where people, with all the ambiguity of those prophecies, see, even when you read them now, it's, you kind of have to work to see the association. But I want to show you that people connected Jesus with this son of David. Remember, the phrase wasn't mentioned. It only applied to Solomon. You have to check it up and see. But son of David only was said in reference to Solomon by Moses and the, by, by, by the prophets, particularly. Now here's some examples. Matthew 9, 27. <clears throat> when Jesus departed thence, two blind men followed him, crying out, saying, Thou son of David! Where did they get that? Mm -hmm. 
Jesus didn't go around saying, I am the son of David. Mm -hmm. But these people knew this. this. These two blind men, they knew this. Yeah. This has got to be who God's told David he was going to raise up. This has got to be because he's doing things that have an eternal impact. Mm -hmm. Here's another, Matthew 15, 22. Behold, the woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. The woman had her daughter vexed of a devil. How did she know this? Well, see, people were more literate. See, hopeless people were talking about, but you know, God's going to yeah. God's gonna redeem us. God's going to save us. Amen. God's going to remember us. So, Lord, people, we don't want the Israelites to outdo us. Yeah. God's people, times are bad. They've got to start saying, Jesus is going to come. God's going to come and save us. He's going to take us out of this morass of sin. It's not mm -hmm. going to always be this way. Yeah. This is how these people were thinking. Matthew 20, verse 30. Behold, two blind men sitting by the way, when they heard Jesus pass by, cried out, Have mercy on us, O Lord, thou son of David. Here's another. Uh, well, I think I'll just uh, I'll stop with that. But you, you can see how these people mm -hmm. recognized in the Lord Jesus uh -huh. something that Scripture said was going to happen. Yes. Yeah. Your yes. idea about Jesus has to be driven by Scripture. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Amen. Your idea about Jesus can't be Jesus is a, is a close friend of us all and Jesus mm -hmm. helps us all. And, it can't be that kind of an idea. You can't have a psychiatrist view of Jesus. Yeah. You really can't. You've got to have a view that's driven by Scripture. Why? Because yes. it's bigger. Amen. It's Amen. bigger and it's better. Amen. Mm -hmm. What right. men view Jesus as, He can help me with my problems. That's too little. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. What are you going to do when you don't have any problems? Mm -hmm. Well, Jesus is for that, too. Mm -hmm. He's Amen. for the people that don't have any problems. Yeah. Then life's treating them pretty good, apparently. <laughs> yes. He's, he's for them, too. Amen. Jesus is a seed that they knew would uh, that they knew would accomplish the promise of God. They bring in a kingdom that would be established, and the people would themselves be part of it. In other words, the seed would be noted by what he did. Mm -hmm. You could you could tell who this person was by what he did. Going to establish judgment. Going to bring light to the Gentiles. Going to set things straight. See, it's what he did that proved who he was. Actually, it's the same with you, too. Mm -hmm. Jesus' uh, ministry was so distinctive and so refreshing. They never did say this to anybody else. They didn't hear Gamaliel, Gamaliel teach and say, this is the son of David. See, they, mm -hmm. they didn't make a connection. No, no Pharisee ever heard anybody say this to him. That's right. But Jesus' ministry was distinctive. It wasn't, right. just, it wasn't just in a creedal form. Jesus is great and so forth, and here it is on his paper. You read it, and it's it's what he did. Yes, yeah. amen. So if you if you've got a God forbid, but if you have a church where Jesus isn't doing anything, you shouldn't really be telling how great Jesus is. Mm -hmm. You should just be telling who God said he was going to send. Tell him that. Tell him who God said he's going to send and what he's going to do. Tell him that. Get people to thinking in another mindset. Jesus' ministry, 16 times they called him Son of David in the Gospel. 16 times mm -hmm. they called him that. <clears throat> and you know, uh, now at this point, enter the scribes. The scribes taught the people this. <laughs> this is one good thing they did. Mark 12, 35, Jesus said, uh, Why do the scribes, Jesus asked them, Why do the scribes say, that he's the son of David, that the Lord is the son of David. So this is one good thing the scribes did, huh? They said, the, whoever the Christ is when he comes, he's the son of David. So the, how's that for God working with uh, <laughs> with Balaam's ass? Mm -hmm. How's that, huh? Amen. The scribes were against Jesus almost unanimously. Yeah, that's right. But yet God used them to establish this thought yes. that the Messiah would be the son of David, which no prophet ever said. They hinted mm -hmm. at it, they implied it, but they never said it. Yeah. So the scribes, it's like God used them, and they taught the people, so the people started looking for the son of uh -huh. David uh -huh. and connected Jesus uh, with mm -hmm. them. Well, now, let's look uh, at these infirmities, these two infirmities that they had. 
those two two responses that the the blind and deaf spoke and saw, and then the people said, "This the son of David." And then, of course, the Pharisees said that he cast out demons by the prince of by Beelzebub, the prince of demons. And Jesus soundly rebuffed them in Matthew the twelfth chapter, <clears throat> verse twenty-five to thirty-seven. Now let's look at these two uh, infirmities. They're parallels in the spirit. Blindness and dumbness. Blindness and dumbness. Blindness, as you know, in the, in, in the spirit is ignorance mm -hmm. or not understanding or not knowing or yeah. not being able to perceive, not being able to discern. That's blindness. And the scriptures have quite a bit to, to say about this. Romans 1.31 says of the fallen Gentiles, they were without understanding. Yeah. Blind. And they couldn't, they can't do any more about their blindness than this than this blind man could do about his. You're going to have to have Jesus intervene here. Well, you got people that just don't know what's going on. They don't understand the Bible. They don't understand what God's doing. See, if Jesus doesn't intervene here, nothing's going to happen. Only he can help in this area. Again, Romans 11, 25. Brethren, I would not have you ignorant of this mystery, lest you be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part has happened unto Israel. See, they got, they don't understand. 1 Corinthians 2, 8 speaks of the princes of the world that had they known who Jesus was, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Why did they crucify him? They were ignorant. They were blind. Couldn't mm -hmm. see 1 Corinthians 2.14 says a natural man can't receive the things of the Spirit of God. They're foolishness to him. Why? He's blind. He's blind. A but this is not a condition too hard for Jesus. 2 Corinthians 4.4 4 says if they, that the God of this world has blinded the minds of those that believe not. He blinded them so they can't, they can't see it. They just can't see it. You try and explain it to them, they just can't see it. But see, gee, this is not too hard. For Jesus, and we're alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that's in us. Ephesians 4:18 says. So spiritual, spiritual blindness is all around us, all around us. In fact, we were all in that category. Every one of us were in that category, blind. But what happened? We, did we like get trained out of it? Can you train a blind man out of blindness? Can you correct blindness by some kind of therapy? <laughs> you can't. Jesus does something about this. If you're not blind anymore, it's because Jesus did something to you. He opened your eyes. That's, if you can understand things now you couldn't understand before, mm -hmm. you're a walking testimonial. That's yes. what you are. Jesus has done something to yes. you. That's a piece of good news, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> he opens eyes. In uh, Isaiah, the 42nd chapter, verse 6, I, the Lord, have called thee in righteousness. I'll hold thy hand. I'll keep thee. He's talking to the, to the Savior. I'll give thee for a covenant to the people, for a light to the Gentiles, to open blind eyes. Yeah. See, that's one of Christ's fundamental ministers. Yes. Why? Because God is not glorified by ignorance. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. People say today, I just heard this again, that you can praise your way into the presence of God. Well, if you are ignorant of God, you don't make one millimeter. You can, you can sing this emulated stuff from now until Jesus comes again. If you don't see something, you can't really praise God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Only people who see can praise God. And, if, and he opens blind's eyes and boy, praise erupts, let me tell you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Ephesians 1.18 tells us he opens the eyes. He opens the eyes of the understanding, enlightens them so they can understand what God's God's doing. And their spiritual dumbness can't communicate mm -hmm. truth. We're not talking here about people who find it hard to speak. That's not what we're talking about. They, they, they can't talk about the things of God. They're just dumb. Right. Their tongue is tied mm -hmm. in this area. I've been a number of places where when at church, they were in church in a service and Everybody's as silent as a tomb. Boy, no one says anything. Mm -hmm. And you ask for prayer, nobody says anything. You ask for a testimony, nobody says anything. Church is over and everybody's talking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Right. Well, I'm not about. They're not talking about God. Right. But everyone's. What's what was wrong? Their tongues tied up in this other area. Uh -huh. They can't talk about those. That's things. right. That's right. I know people that are very, very uh, backward. But when person you talk to them, hey, they can talk right out about the things of God. They'll share with you. Maybe they couldn't stand up here and say it, but they can talk about it. But uh -huh. they're they're dumb people in the kingdom. They can't, they can't talk about it. That's right. Here's what the scripture says. What happened in the era of Christ? Isaiah 32, 4. The heart also of the rash shall understand knowledge, and the tongue of the stammerers shall be ready to speak plainly. That's one of the marks of a person in Christ. They can talk mm -hmm. about these things. Yes, amen. You may be a one on one, but it's, uh, I'll tell you, I've had yeah. some pretty refreshing talks yeah. with amen. people that weren't public speakers, but they could talk. Yes. They could talk amen. about these things. Amen. And would you notice that among some of the uh, brothers and sisters in the assembly? Mm -hmm. Sometimes they, when they say something, it's like, wait, even, oh, really good what they said there. What was it? Their tongue been loose. Yeah. Amen. That's what it was. Mm -hmm. Amen. Here it is again in Isaiah 35 6. Then shall the lame man leap as a heart, and the tongue of the dumb sing. Now that they talk, they can do it in music. Uh -huh. yeah. They can sing the mighty power of God. Yes. <laughs> so you see, there's uh, this is the ministry of Jesus. He teaches you to talk. Let me give you another example. Luke 21, 14. Jesus had told his disciples they were going to be brought before like worldly dignitaries. Some of these were fishermen, you know, and collectors and some of this we don't know what they were but they were from the lower caste that didn't deal with public people a lot now you're going to be standing for kings and people mm -hmm. that knew how to talk uh -huh, and uh -huh. they'd have orders you know one time Paul was Tertullius was an orderer or an uh, orator and presented a case against Paul strong orator you think boy how am I going to answer that well he told his disciples this is going to happen to you you're going to stand before people who are expert speakers uh-huh Here's what he said, Luke 21, 14. Settle it, in, settle it therefore in your heart, mm -hmm. not to meditate before what you shall answer, for I will give you a mouth. Yes, amen. <laughs> Have you experienced this? I, I know mm -hmm. some of you experienced this. You've got a mouth. Yeah. All of a sudden you're in the corner and you're, only, you're just able to speak about the things of God. What was it? God gave you a mouth. Yeah and wisdom, mm -hmm. which your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay or resist. They might just say, well, I don't want to talk about it anymore. I can see we're not, I don't want to talk about it anymore. But believe me, if they figured they were smarter than you, they'd keep on talking. But when you testify for Christ, it like stops the mouth Amen. of the adversary. But what I'm showing you here is that these miracles depicted actually what Jesus does to every one of us. He takes away our blindness, that in a sense was imposed upon us. Mm -hmm. We were slaves of Satan, and so he passed along some of his traits to us. Mm -hmm. That's what he did. Yep. When Adam sinned, he picked up the traits of the old serpent. Yep. These are his traits. Yep. But when Jesus came, he gave you his traits. Amen. Amen. So what is the conclusion to all of these things? Well, sin has taken a terrible toll on humanity. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. It has, but Jesus is equal to the challenge. Yes. I bid you to uh, ponder often what Jesus can do mm -hmm. and then beat a path to him. Mm 